Hi and welcome back to my video. Welcome back to the nuke. I'm doing something I guess a bit different uh, generally. I've done a few of these like reading vlogs way back in the longer history of my channel which is I guess about a year ago um, and I'm recording this audio on my phone which is how I used to record my audio before I got a mic um, that drastically improved my audio but because I'm gonna be filming from different positions. Um, yeah, I thought that it will be nice to bring this old method back and make things feel a bit more personal. Um, yeah, so today I have the whole day at home um, and it's really nice. I actually am now able to spend some time doing things that I want to I want to do like alone and that would be reading books and I guess just thinking about things maybe journal and um, I think um, my cat is gonna be attacking me <laughs> oh okay <laughs> there we go <laughs> a massive cat attack right there so this is <laughs> agent P oh agent P can't do that on camera Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the program. <laughs> it's currently around 11am and um, I have a cup of coffee with me here. So these beans are from a local roaster. Just a general filter, iced filter coffee to enjoy. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about a few books I just got from the library. Again, I every time I go to the library and I want to return my books, I end up borrowing more books and then paying my overdue fines because I never finished them on time. This was a book I wanted to talk about in my previous like, I don't know, haul or like wrap up video. And it's just a random book that I picked up that was about this ethnographer. It's a kind of graphic novel, like comic style thing that just literally talks about the in and outs of anthropology or I guess like ethnography in this case the method of ethnography and it's extremely methods based it talks about um, the ethics framework and it also talks about the theory behind um, ethnography it even has um, terminologies like the R IRB um, and talks about gears, you know, and uh, participant observation. These are all terms that you probably would be familiar with if you've ever studied ethnography or anthropology. And I just thought I'll pick this up because I know that quite a few people have been asking me about anthropology as a discipline. Um, yeah, and I guess this is the first time I've seen such a cute take, like such an entertaining take on uh, such a dry topic such as methods. So I just wanted to share this book because it was a gem that I found while just browsing the library. <laughs> Beyond just books, I've been watching a lot of videos as I guess everyone does. Um, but recently I've been getting into a lot of Noam Chomsky's like lectures, people who have uploaded his talks and lectures. Currently going through this um, documentary, Manufacturing Consent. Uh, the thing about me is that I don't really watch things very well and my attention span is really short when it comes to videos actually. Um, I am really bad at finishing movies or dramas or TV shows and things like that which is surprising I guess because most people are able to get through shows much faster than books but I think for me it's the other way around. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but um, if anyone has any sort of shows to recommend to me, I would love to watch them. But honestly, now I'm just cycling through a lot of different lectures that I find on YouTube. But yeah, not very exciting stuff. If not, I am just watching NCT. Uh, they're having a comeback soon. So that is what I watch for uh, mindless entertainment, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <That's>, mm. <laughs> well, I did say this was going to be a reading vlog, so... um. I'm going to talk about some books that I am currently reading. So the first book that I'm moving on to after reading um, Second Nature by Nathaniel Rich and I think um, Losing Eden by Lucy Jones. So I just finished those two books last week. I did not actually finish um, Second Nature by Nathaniel Rich because I really quickly lost 
my attention or my focus so far because the book itself was very 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 um focused on a few specific contexts that were happening in america and i felt like i had read enough books or i had been exposed to enough articles that were a bit too centric on america and i wanted to know more globally in terms of the climate crisis so i quickly dropped that book um but losing eden was not too bad it was a bit more broad um and it's mostly about psychology so it's really very heavily um based on psychological fact so a lot of psychology studies and clinical studies and things like that which is a really refreshing read uh given that i've been reading a lot of um generally environmental journalism stuff and i've always enjoyed reading psychology so that was a good i guess mix for me i think it would be great for people who are more interested in psychology as well but after that i'm moving on to this um as i mentioned noam chomsky is someone that i've recently been trying to understand a bit better um, i'm not really at a point where i can fully confidently say that i endorse his work so like that i follow his as in as i you know yeah like you know as in we're all learning right so i'm just in the process of figuring out what his um theories are like what they mean to me so um this is a book i picked up in the library uh i thought it was pretty interesting i don't know about the second author i've never heard of the second author before marv waterstone but um this book is a is based on a series of lectures that these two authors gave in i think mit if i'm not wrong um talking about the different ways that capitalism is kind of manifested in our society and the subsequent consequences of it so it seems to be a very wide scope that's being addressed in this book and so far because it is kind of based on a lecture based on a series of lectures chomsky's writing is very social linguistic so it's very very heavily reliant on um understanding fundamental human uh nature how that manifests in our communication and subsequently our political frameworks so if you're someone that's very into that kind of uh macro and uh abstract framework of looking at um economic models and basically political models i think this would be a good approach to take um but i can tell that this is some probably an approach that would feel a bit too far fetched for some people especially people who don't have a lot of exposure or like don't have a lot of interest in political science or political theory um even for people who are just in political theory going by a very abstract and kind of social linguistic manner would might be a bit too much of a stretch for a lot of people so um I wouldn't think that this would be suitable for a lot of like uh new readers or for people who don't have a lot of time or the bandwidth to go so in depth into these issues. This is something definitely that I would say is like more of a textbook for students. Sorry, my cat is just playing in the background. So, I was in the library as well and I picked up a couple of books on Malay fiction here in Singapore because, you know, I've read Singapore Pura, which was a book I talked about my wrap up um and I really really enjoyed it and I realized that I haven't been paying much attention to Singlet lately, so I picked up this anthology called Sikit Sikit Lama Lama Jadi Bukit. Get this is, um, it's an anthology of poems, and um, it's a compilation of different Malay poetry. Uh, a lot of them have commentary on the rapid urbanization of Singapore, so a lot of the poems do, uh, kind of reference actual streets and buildings here in Singapore. or you know very specific things like um certain certificates uh, and stuff like that so um that's really interesting and uh it's bilingual so there's one side that's malay and the other side is english and i really enjoy these kinds of um bilingual books um i do have a few that are in chinese as well um and i think for me as someone who whose primary language is still english but with as someone who does have some kind of exposure to both chinese and malay i mean bahasa to on a pretty frequent basis um it's a good way for me to kind of get in touch with the creative sides of those languages i guess for me like language has held language has always been a very tenuous thing i've never really found myself being creative in other languages other than english uh chinese was always something that was a bit more of a practical thing for me because it was mandated for me to take uh my mother tongue in school so i was never really confident in expressing myself through that language 
Uh, whereas in Bahasa, it's kind of like the opposite. It's the language of my home. It's not something that I really adopt in a very professional or formal way. Um, and I often mix it uh, with English. So it's a bit of like a campuran of like different languages. Um, so I'm still figuring that out. I think it's always good to figure out things uh, with other languages. And yeah, language is a big thing. Um, I have coffee and a donut um, that I'm eating now. I'm not really sure about the direction of this video, honestly, um, but there is something I've been wanting to discuss a little bit more, and I guess I didn't want to make it like a full-fledged video. Um, and that's uh, basically about this concept of a video essay. So, you know, I was just on my YouTube creator studio thing and i realized that you could actually see what other channels that people were, al were also watching um, alongside yours and i realized that quite a lot of people were watching um, a lot of other channels that did um, video commentaries um, yeah and i guess i kind of understand because the videos that uh, blew up on my channel were commentary videos sort of uh, rather than my book related videos which is completely fine because I think um, the trends were sort of speaking in that way I've been thinking about this format of a of a video essay a lot I enjoy making videos you know, just talking about my opinions on things and people have asked me this before, like whether I feel pressured to say things that sound smart um, or to always have a point that I'm arguing. Um, and you know, I don't always have a point to argue all the time. I kind of feel that sometimes, like, oh, I have to be able to say something a bit more intelligent, or you know, even the video that I did on ambition, it wasn't so much that I had a coherent argument to make. I guess I was just sharing my thoughts and opinions on what I felt was kind of taught to me and then further on in my life how I've just felt that these things didn't really pan out the way that I expected them to. Obviously all these things I say are from a very personal standpoint and I've seen other channels that have grown pretty large um, where you know people start to have expectations that YouTubers or content creators um, know what to say or that they always have to say the correct stuff or they always have to say the most like um, intellectually relevant stuff all the time um, and I kind of want to push back on that because and I don't know about other content creators but I always want to emphasize that I'm just you know an ordinary person I mean I don't want to say like maybe I'm the most average person but I am definitely someone that isn't trying to put myself across as necessarily more intelligent than anyone else. <laughs> Sorry, she's just really intrigued by the donut. Um, and yeah, <laughs> you want to eat the donut? So I guess um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about what I feel about the video essay format. Um, at first I thought it was like a great way to get people to think critically and to see things beyond their service level, which I think is great. So I feel like, you know, recently there has been a lot of commentary in different areas. So one example would be like fashion, kind of dissecting fashion trends, um, looking at things from a very historically critical way, which I think is great. And I think it has made um, these kinds of intellectual inquiries much more accessible to everyone. Um, I think that's always a good thing. Uh, you know, and I, I am generally in support of this very overarching move towards intellectualizing things um, and encouraging people to, yeah, think a bit more deeply about everyday issues. And I think that's the key point here is that it's to get everyday people to think a bit more critically about everyday things. And it's never about overcomplicating things um, to a degree where the people that it actually affects uh, won't be able to understand the ways that the issues are being unpacked, etc. Um, and I really strongly believe that. I feel like if you're going to intellectualize something, it has still it still has to be accessible to the people 
whose issues are being intellectualized. I've been seeing a lot of different video essay takes on almost everything um, to the point where almost everything has some kind of critical take on it. I, I mean, it's my own choice where right? I could choose to log off and form my own opinion before I watch all these video essays. The truth is, a lot of us um, watch these videos sometimes without even watching the original thing or watch or understanding the context it's in. Um, I, I am guilty of that. I tend to watch a lot of videos about things I've never watched before so even for like squid game i've never actually watched the show but i've watched a couple of commentary videos talking about it and um, kind of unpacking the ways that it criticizes capitalism and inequality uh, and i found myself wondering if um, this was okay uh, forming my opinions based on other people's opinions before i could form my own um yeah and that kind of sat with me a bit in a, in a kind of uncomfortable way and I wondered whether people felt that about my videos I kind of felt like you know I mean I understand if people are asking me for more commentary videos or like essay type videos um, but at the same time I didn't want my videos to be the only way that people would be exposed to these ideas um, and for people to think the same way that I do because I'm just this one person that has opinions about a certain thing that I wanted to encourage a conversation about because I didn't want to be opinion driven on this channel I didn't want people to come back just for my specific opinions and my specific arguments I kind of want people to come back to my channel because of the resources that I might give or some of the questions that I might pose um, and some of the ways that maybe people could apply them to their own lives nothing wrong with watching the videos themselves but I do think it gets a bit problematic if we are relying a lot, a lot on these content creators or YouTubers to tell us what is a political, politically correct way of thinking today. Um, it's always about discussion, it's always about broadening your way of looking at the world, I feel. So, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people already know that. Um, yeah, she's a tortoise shell cat. She's around five months old. Um, and she's very quiet, so she doesn't really meow. She doesn't really make a lot of noise unless um, it's in the morning. Oh, there she is. Thanks for saying hi to the camera. Yeah, but she's extremely curious and she gets into a lot of trouble in the day. Um, and sometimes we spend a long time trying to find her because she doesn't, we don't, we won't know where she is without the bell. So that's that. <laughs> I don't know what the point of this vlog was. I, I realize I'm pretty bad at this format. <laughs> um, yeah, I realize I, I've been just filming in my room. Uh, I didn't really show you all things outside. Um, I guess I still feel pretty self-conscious when it comes to filming things that are not uh, typical sit-down-and-talk videos about things that are just in my head um and it's kind of funny because I, I do have experience doing a lot of like video videography stuff so i kind of know how to do storyboarding and all that but i just find it very strange to be doing it uh for my own vlog and to showcase mm -hmm. my own life mm -hmm. i don't know i hope this vlog was kind of interesting to watch anyway and if you're just watching it to play in the background that's also fine i think that's what I do most of the time for other videos anyway. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching so far. I mean, I don't know who would watch this vlog. Uh, it's just a very chill, like, uh, see what's in my head for over a few days sort of scenario. Uh, <laughs> mm, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope I'll have something much more substantial to say. 
in the next video um i'm I, I, yeah maybe vlogs are not just for me maybe after many tries uh yeah i'm here so <laughs> if you enjoyed the vlog thank you so much i i think i'm one of the most boring people ever i hope you have been having a good week and uh, happy halloween it's halloween week uh have fun i guess but stay safe while having fun that's really important so cheers i'll see you this is oat milk uh oat latte by the way it's really yummy bye